Okay, tell me what happened, why you're here today. I'm here to speak about my father, Mohammed Hamid. He was wrongly accused of terrorism in the year 2005. He was wrongly accused under the Terrorism Act of 2000. He was accused of paintballing and camping. Paintballing is not illegal in the United Kingdom. It is an it is a activity that many people do to just have fun. Um, the BBC Four actually paid for him to do this documentary and encouraged him to do paintballing to show activities within the Muslim community of what Muslims actually do in the community. So paintballing was one of the um, activities that BBC Four actually paid for him to go and do. Um, then they later on used this um, documentary in court for evidence to accuse him of training under the Terrorism Act. So it's really, really pathetic, you know, that someone can be charged with training by going paintballing and camping. Well, was this the major evidence against him? Yeah, the major evidence was camping and paintballing. Uh, because he was training to be a terrorist? This is what they were trying to imply and say yes. Um, well, you know your father. Can you believe he was training to be a terrorist? No, nope, not at all. I mean, he's 100% innocent. You know, I went to the court and I was sitting in the court case for the whole six months listening to, you know, the prosecution and all their skeletons and all their mishaps of, you know, just trying to convict someone on something that they didn't really have much evidence to provide for. So the only evidence they could provide was showing them paintballing, which was a documentary for BBC Four, and camping. It, it, it took six months? Why did it take six months? Because the jury was just confused. The jury just didn't know what to do. You know, they couldn't reach a verdict. They, <coughs> they had so many... I mean, the prosecution actually had a couple people come in to give um, witness statements. There were two police officers from Cumbria Wells um, they were paid like they were obviously paid by the prosecution to give statements on seeing um, these group of so-called Muslim men in the fields and they both stated that they were doing military tr um, style training and stuff so when it came to court I mean my father's QC said well how can they have been doing military training when both of you have claimed that you're, that you're both from military training backgrounds. So how could that be? So we realised that someone was lying. We looked back to both of their statements and they had identical police statements. So they were both lying under oath, you know, and they actually got caught bang to rights in the courtroom where they got cleared on those charges and it was, we weren't to say anything else of it. You know, the, the media and the press weren't allowed to put that in the media. Let's accept that your father was innocent. He's nevertheless been targeted. Why was he singled out? I think my father was singled out because he had an impact on the community. He used to have a stall on Marble Arch from Monday to Saturday on the corner of Oxford Street where he was distributing a lot of literature on the conspiracies of 9-11, the conspiracy of 7-7, um, Zionism in Israel and all these documentaries about secret societies, the Masons and you know he was well known within the community he used to go speaker's corner on a sunday as well and like you know speak to the whole of speaker's corner and i just think he was victimized for the knowledge he had and all the information he had and that he was distribu distributing they didn't want him on the streets doing what he was doing so they had to find a reason to get him away you know they had to put him behind bars like you know like nelson mandela and all the other people that have been victimized for freedom of speech so maybe this Channel 4 documentary was even part of a setup and a stitch-up? Yeah, it was. Yeah, I sincerely believe it was. I mean, um, I've worked closely with Phil Rees and Nazreen Suleiman, who were the actual people who were paid to do the documentary for BBC4. Um, Phil actually asked me when I last spoke to him that, do I actually blame him? And I said, I do, but I don't blame him individually, I blame the people that were working behind closed, closed doors using him as the guinea pig, you know, because when we tried to um, get access to the actual documentary, they couldn't find it, it had gone missing from the office, you know, they said somebody had took it to go and take to the school to show children um, about other cultures in life and stuff, and you know, it was just like, you know, Secret Service losing all their logbooks. 
Okay, finally, what would you ask anyone that's looking at this video? What would you ask them to do? I would ask them to help me in my campaign, just to help me free my father and to help me in my campaign to just stop this from happening to any other family. And to speak up about what you know within the case and what, you, what, what, what actually happened. I would like for people like Attila, who, who, was close, who was one of the Cody's arrested with my father, to speak out again, like, speak about what really happened to him in, that, in the cell, you know? Why did he crumble and go guilty and what did they actually do to him, you know? I, I want to know the truth. So he was arrested with someone else who, who pleaded guilty? After crumbling, yeah, you know, he, they, they actually went for the weakest one out of the lot, you know. He was suffering panic, panic attacks in his cell, he was, he was going crazy, you know, he was shaving off his beard, going mad, not knowing what to do. And I think they just victimised him and said, look, if you go guilty, we'll do such and such. You know, and it's all worked out in his favour now because he's actually walking the streets now while my father's the one who's left inside do, with this hefty, hefty sentence on him, you know, and they just think it's okay to get on with their normal lives and I'm not going to kick up a stink where I am. You know, I'm going to kick up a big stink, you know, and I just hope I don't get into trouble along the way, but, you know, the, 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 mo the most I can do is get my voice to be heard and I really could do with some support from the Muslim community because everybody who's helping me at the moment they're not really, they're not Muslims, they're not, they're, they're not like my brother or sister, you know, they're meant to be the ones that help me, but they don't help me. So, you know, I really do appreciate the help from Passing Clouds and Bridget and all the other Stop the War campaign and all these peaceful protesters who are actually helping me and speaking out against the injustice of my father's harsh sentence. I get this might not go in the video, but I guess the, the Muslim community feels in a state of fear and frenzy in general. Yeah, they are. I mean, I'm very fearful too, but I don't want this to happen to my children or another friend who lives next door. I don't want them to go through these things. So the most I can do is <coughs> raise my <coughs> voice in what's going on. <coughs> Thank you.